Hello, welcome to Local Anesthetic Podcast, your regular injection of mind-numbing local news. This is episode 361 now, and as always, I'm joined by Rob to cover more strange, sinister, weird, funny local news stories. You know the drill. Hi, Rob. How are you doing there? Hello, mate. Yeah, not too bad. Um, been away for over a week, um, which is quite nice because at the beginning of that week, we celebrated... Lyra's first birthday, uh, obviously a significant milestone. Um, we had a little party uh, with, with uh, uh, up north with friends and family, which was very pleasant. Um, and uh, most importantly, um, you know, a time comes in every child's life where they need to visit a, a heritage railway for the first time. And that's what we did, Alex. And she was over the moon. Right. Yeah. Well, she didn't have really have much of a yeah. choice, did she? I mean, you're, you're in control of what she does at the moment. Yeah, well, only, I mean, yeah, only well, time will tell, Rob, where, where, whether once she reaches adolescence, she, she looks back on these memories fondly or says, oh, I used to hate it when you used to drag me around railways and, you know, punks your heart with one sentence. We'll find out. Well, I mean, she certainly seems to enjoy Alex. So, uh, I mean, you're, time, time will tell, but, um, you know, I, there'll, be, there'll be many railways um, before that, that time comes. Okay, good. The, the other big piece of news is that Rob is finally feeling better. Yes, um, I think More this is, I mean, uh, you know, there's been an ongoing uh, uh, sort of breakdown in the last couple of weeks, well, months really, of, uh, of the various ailments that I've, I've, I've uh, succumbed to. Um, I don't think I mentioned on the last podcast that I was having a, a, a stomach complaint. Um, I won't go into detail. It wasn't particularly pleasant, <laughs> but uh, that seems to have cleared up now, thankfully. Um, put it, put it so, this way. Yeah. <laughs> Remember our pilot episode, Rob, about Poo Alley? It, it, it was sort of, sort of like that. But Rob is uh, yeah. Rob is feeling a lot better, and we're pleased to hear it. Right, and you look and you look well as well, mate. You look fighting fit and ready to go. And um, before we crack on with the stories, you said to me before we started recording that you had some other news, uh, listener related news, I assume. Uh, yes, there's just a few bits, um, all from Kyber. Um, the the first thing Kyber very kindly shared a picture, which I'm see I'm guessing you've seen on Instagram which is a, a, a photograph of the, you know, there's those newspaper boards, which basically show you a headline. So it's from the Dorset Echo, uh, and it has uh, breaking the law now legal. So I'm guessing that was in relation <laughs> to, uh, I'm guessing that was in relation to a Mr. B. Johnson. Um, uh, also, now, <laughs> you may be familiar with, uh, with this, this group. Have you ever heard of, uh, of Cunt, and the, uh, Cunt and the Gang, Alex? Cunt? Sorry, Cunt and the Gang. No, I've heard of Cool yeah. and the Gang, not Cunt and the Gang. Well, I, I don't know how I, I first discovered Cunt and the Gang. Cunt, cunt spelt with a, a K, by the way. Uh, cunt and the Gang, um, when the, they, uh, they released a song back in um, 2000, well, I think it's 2006, I think, uh, called Fuckstick. But he's been in the news more recently because he's been trying to get to the Christmas number one. Um, so he tried first time round in 2020 oh, uh, with a song yeah, uh, with the song uh, Boris Johnson is a fucking cunt. Yes, um, yeah. and then tried again in two thousand, uh, or tried the last year really, uh, with Boris Johnson is still a fucking cunt. Um, but the reason I mention this is because that Kyber shared with us that uh, um, apparently they created a, a Shannon Matthews the musical. <laughs> <laughs> Shannon so, Matthews. Yes, that rings a bell in relation. So Wasn't that a Shannon murder Matthews. Case? No, well, no, thankfully it wasn't, no. So Shannon Matthews was the mother who claimed that uh, her, her daughter had been abducted. Yeah, that was it. Um, and it turns out that I think he, he, was, in, he was living in the uncle's house. So it, it was all staged. Yeah. Um, so apparently, yeah, they, 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 so Cunt of the Gang, who's, a, who's just basically one guy, he's from, he's from Basildon. Uh, it's, I mean, it's very tongue-in-cheek, and as, as, uh, uh, as Kyber says, it's very potty mouth, but absolutely on the nose. And uh, he sent a link to the Facebook. Uh, so apparently the whole thing uh, is actually on YouTube, not Facebook. So if you want to watch the whole thing, which I must admit, I'm actually quite tempted to do, because I think it will be very entertaining. So if anyone wants to see it, it is on the group page. Um, but yeah, the whole thing... Shannon Matthews, the musical, which is an hour and fifty minutes long, can be found on uh, on the um, on on YouTube. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Kyber. I really should say thank you, Rob, for disseminating the news. Right, let's start. Right, Rob, this is unlike me. I'm going to start off with a kind of good, a kind of a good news news story. You know, one of those heartwarming stories. This is a heartwarming story, Rob. Um, and I can't take credit for this. My girlfriend told me about it, and I thought, Do you know what, I'm going to feature this because it's just. <laughs> 
a nice lightweight to start the podcast. By the way, none of this is me being sarcastic. It actually is a sort of kind right. of one of those okay. heartwarming stories. It's quite small. I'm, I, the version I'm reading is from the New York Post, uh, but I think Reuters are the people who are responsible for it. March 30th. Um, do you know I've just realised something, Rob? Yeah. This story is from 2015. <laughs> <laughs> now, my girlfriend oh, came across this on, on social media. She came across this on social media. Now, that just tells you everything you need to know, right? Yeah, well, it really does. I, I don't want to read it out now. I'll just give you the, I'll give you the gist. Four-year-old takes 3 a.m. bus ride to get slushy. <laughs> and there's you a video. Read that, that, is, that sounds like a good story. Well, a four-year-old Pennsylvania girl surprised a driver and passengers when she boarded a public bus alone in the middle of the night on a quest for a sugary slushy, transportation officials said on Sunday. When you watch the video, what's remarkable is you, it's, it's the... It's the video cam, uh, the security camera from inside the bus. Right. And what's what, what the most remarkable thing is when the bus pulls over and the doors open, and this little tiny little four year old comes up the stairs. Is an adult who's standing outside? You know, another passenger helps her up, like, <laughs> helps her onto the bus. Anyway. Surveillance footage shows the pint-sized girl with blonde hair bundled up all in purple, boarding a Philadelphia bus at 3am local time Friday, sitting down by herself as a handful of passengers looked curiously towards her. The girl, who appeared cheerful as she stretched and dangled her boots off the seat, told bus riders she wanted to get a slushy. Now, Rob, did you, did, did you, you know, when I was younger, um, I, we, I was blessed that on where I live, which was Sydenham, Sydenham High Street had a 7-Eleven. And I always regret the day that closed down. Sorry, um, I didn't even know there were 7-Elevens in the UK. Yes, yes, yeah, we had them for quite a while. Right. Yeah, maybe not where you were, Rob, but uh, yeah, there was one on Sydney High Street and you could get uh, a big gulp right, and a slushy and things like that. Uh, did you ever have these kind of drinks when you were younger, Rob? Well, we had slushies, of course. I mean, I think they, they, you know, they're, they're everywhere, but... Uh... Well, are they, is that basically a slush puppy? Yeah, yeah. I loved those. What I'll tell you what, Rob, it was a different time. It was a different era when I was younger because I would, on a weekly basis, go to Crystal Palace Sports Centre, which is still there and hasn't changed in, the, in, the, in, the, in any of the uh, no. uh, <laughs> inter- intervening years at all. But it's, I still love it. As a, I love it. As a, I think it's a masterpiece of like 60s architecture. But I used to go there swimming once a week. And you would come out of the swimming pool and on your way, and, and uh, when you'd finished changing and you were on your way leaving in these sort of underground corridors, which as you know, sort of, there's, it's like a maze in that sports centre. Yeah. There, there were vending machines where you could buy, you know, chocolate bars, Coca-Cola, and there was a slush puppy machine. It just shows it was a different era. Nobody cared about health. So I, I, every week after my swim, I would get a slush puppy, pure sugar, and God knows what else. Um, as I said, it was a different era, Rob. You know, Alex, you, I've got to. I think you have to respect Slush Puppy because um, uh, you know any any sort of company that markets, you know, because I, I don't remember Slush Puppy having flavors. They do. They obviously do have flavors. But oh, the blue usually one. It would oh. be blue or red. Now, yeah, doesn't give you any more indication than that. You just pick the pick the blue or the red, and it's just full of sugar and coloring, and that's it. Yeah. Oh, and ice, obviously. Yeah. Well, this girl. Um, so upon noticing the child, the bus driver pulled over, called his control centre, waited for police to invive, arrive. The girl was taken unharmed to a nearby hospital where she was reunited with her parents. And that's kind of basically it. Um, but the point is, Rob, this is a four-year-old. How did she disappear? First of all, how does she wake up? She's fully dressed. She gets out of the house and she even gets to the bus stop. That's quite remarkable. I mean, Alex, for me, that those things are irrelevant because my, my concern is that you said that there was there were a number of people on that bus. Why did no one inquire? I mean, they were obviously speaking to her to find out the, the fact that she was travelling to get a slushy. Why does some, no one think to say, is there someone with you? Do you need some help? They just thought, no, she's just a four-year-old enjoying her ride to go and get a slush puppy. Everything here is fine. At 3am as well, no less. <laughs> yeah. Rob, did you, when you were growing up, ever run away from home or think about running away from home? I, I kind of have an image of you, you know, like with one of those sticks with the um, bag, sort the, of the, the... With the bindle, the kind of, yeah. <laughs> with, with the tea towel sort of tied up around it with sort of your... Yes, yeah, uh, so they're called bindles, possessions. Alex. Yeah, okay, thank you. Well, the fact that you know what they're called suggests that you probably did. <laughs> uh, no, no, I mean, Alex, why would I? I lived in the countryside. I mean, life was, uh, you know, as close as to a utopia as possible, really. Right. Before I moved to the city. 
that was that that was that story. So we just we're gonna get rid of that. Um, let's do <laughs> a Florida-based story. This is from the Traitorous Guardian. Um, it's published Saturday, twenty third of April by Maya Yang. This is a great story, Rob. Whichever way you look at it, whichever way you look at it. Florida bride and caterer charged after serving marijuana-laced food at wedding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't insane. do that. I mean, it, 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 look, if, if the guest's an agreement, that's fine, but I'm assuming oh, they were... They this were... is the key thing. They had no idea, Rob. Okay, so yeah. a Florida bride and her wedding caterer have been criminally charged after serving food laced with marijuana to their wedding guests, sickening them and sending several to hospital. Danya Shear... Svod, Svod, Svoboda, 42, and Jocelyn Montrenice Bryant, 31, who catered her wedding, faces charges of violating Florida's anti-tampering laws, delivery of marijuana, and, Rob, culpable negligence. Can I just say, Rob, I want to start right now. I want to bring back the detective show and make, make the next great detective show, yeah? Mm. Kind of think about, like, Colombo or Miami Vice or any of them, right? And I'm going to call it culpable negligence. <laughs> I mean, Alex, do you not think that there are enough... It's going to be set in the US. Well, do you not think there are enough sort of, you know, the, the, the typical Florida man stories to, to make a detective show? Because every single episode would be unbelievably different. You know, the, plot, the plots would vary considerably. Yeah, absolutely. And I've got loads. I've got loads of them this week. Not, I don't even think I'm going to... I think this might be the only one I get to read out. But look, on 19th of February, um, Seminole... I hope I'm saying that right to all you Floridians. Seminole County deputies arrived at a community clubhouse where fire rescue personnel were treating multiple guests for symptoms consistent with that of somebody who's used illegal drugs, in quotes. Can I just petition you now, Rob? Episode title, Symptoms Consistent with That of Someone Who Has Used Illegal Drugs. Can we just say right now, we're nailing that on? See, if I didn't have an episode title in, 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 in oh, fuck my you, very man. last story of the day, then let's park it. We can come back to it. Fair enough. Upon asking the bride and groom whether they'd consented to or requested any of the food to contain cannabis products, the groom, Andrew... Stared, uh, in quote, stared at a deputy with a blank expression for a few moments before stuttering through a no, said their arrest warrant affidavit. Alex, does it say why they did this? Oh, we'll get we'll get on to this, I think. Authorities okay. tried to locate the manager of the catering service, but found all of the catering staff leaving the premises. They collected used glassware and utensils, as well as food, including lasagna, chocolate-covered strawberries, and pudding shots. Wedding guests who were treated for symptoms reportedly said they felt, in quotes, high, ill, and stoned. <laughs> no, that's, no. that's what you want for a wedding, though, Alex. I was about to say, I find weddings hard to get through at the best of times. I think this, this would help. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, one guest who ate the Caesar salad, tortellini, and bread with an olive oil and herb dip said he, in quotes, felt tingly, his heart started to raise, and he was having crazy thoughts, adding that he'd used marijuana years ago. <laughs> <laughs> He said he'd used marijuana years ago, but this experience, in quotes, felt different to him. Another guest who ate the salad dip and three meatballs said he felt weird, tingly, fidgety and had extreme dry mouth. Um, one guest began vomiting. And Rob, wait, this is a, this is a piece de la resistance. <laughs> one guest began vomiting and another grew paranoid that her son-in-law had died and her family had not told her. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, that's, that's a very specific concern. Yeah, well, it's paranoia, isn't it? This is, I think this is more, this is more than just average cannabis. This is, this is, uh, yeah. you know. But literally, they must have laced everything. Every meal that was served these poor guests. One of the guests claimed to have seen the caterer reach into a punch bowl and remove a green substance, saying she could detect, in quotes, a strong odour of marijuana. So, according to the affidavit, she asked the caterer if there was marijuana in the food. The caterer, in quotes, giggled and shook her head. Yes. She said the guests asked if this was for real, and the caterer repeated, yes. Several guests went to hospital where THC was found in their blood. Food samples collected at the wedding also contained THC. According to the affidavit, um, Svoboda agreed to and allowed this caterer to lace the food she served with cannabis, unbeknownst to the attendees, many of whom became very ill and required medical attention. I don't know why. I think that's one of the biggest questions. 
I think that is the biggest question on all of our minds in speaking with some of the family members one guest told WESH2. We want an explanation, but Rob, I'm sorry to tell you, my friend, there is no explanation. Why did they do this? It's a very odd thing to do, Rob. Especially at your own wedding, you potentially ruin ruin the thing. The only thing I can think is that they wanted their their their, their guests to really have an enjoyable day, and the only thought they, the only way they 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 thought that could happen is is by you know <laughs> lacing their food with a narcotic. Apparently, indeed. Okay, Rob. Look, I is the return in local anaesthetic of the bad news animal story. I have to tell you this. Great. Not only in this, but in the Patreon episode, the upcoming Patreon episode. Uh, what Patreon episode will that be, by the way? Um, uh, I think that'll be 22, I believe. Yeah. So if you're not on Patreon, anybody, we've got, we, we, we do another podcast, uh, which is called LA Podcast and Extra Jab, which is basically more stories like the ones you're listening to. And it's only on Patreon, Patreon, P A T R E O N dot com forward slash L A Podcast Extra E X T R A. Um, and there you can sign up for two pounds a month and you get all these bonus episodes. You get two a month and there's already over 20 on there. They're brilliant. But the point is, Rob, I've decided I had to make a decision. I'm going to cover one bad news animal story on this podcast. But the other one. I, I think I have to reserve behind the paywall of the Patreon episodes because, Rob, okay. you know that we sometimes use the Patreon to cover those stories that are a bit more near the knuckle that we might yeah. not. Yeah. We might feel bad about doing on the free podcast. The other story... So that, we don't want to put it in the public domain. Yeah, the other yeah. story, Rod, which I'm going to read, yeah, on the Patreon, so prepare yourself for that when we come to record it, whenever we do it, is without doubt the most... Uh, I don't know how to describe it, Rob. It's the worst, worst news animal story we've ever read, but I still can't oh, believe that this story is in print. And I don't know what to make of it. I still don't even know whether I should cover it, but it's going to be on the Patreon, Patreon episode 22, for anybody who wants to hear it. But let's cover this one, you, which is bad Is that even, bad worse, than the, even worse than the story about the, the dead sheep stuffed in a, in, a, in a charity bin? And even worse than Buddy and his pet cat, his best friend, the cat that he might grow to death? Oh, I would God. Say, yeah. I would say, yes, it will, be, will always be the worst news animal story we've ever read. Okay. Uh, something to look forward to? I'll open. I'll open with it on the Patreon, right, Rob? Anyway, right. Look, let's let's go to the let's go to Cornwall, the Cornwall Live, twenty um, second of April. It's by Edward Church, reporter. This is this is also bad, Rob. It's bad. Beloved Saint. Is, oh, by the way, is it Saint Moors? Have you ever heard of Saint Moors? M A W E S. I think it is Saint Moors. Yeah, I think you're right. Mm, okay. Beloved Saint Moors Swan is in quotes beheaded and dumped in the sea. Right. <laughs> So obviously we have we have the goose earlier this year that oh um the, the beloved Derek. goose that went Derek that went Derek, Derek the, the goose. goose that which which went went missing all of a sudden um, and then turned up dead. But, oh God! What, what's going on, Alex? What, what's happened? I'll, I'll tell you. Residents of a seaside village are reeling after its loved and friendly swan was allegedly killed and decapitated on Thursday morning at around eight a.m. They always seem to take place around this time. I swear it's the same with Derek the Goose. I think you're right. It was around that time in the morning. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. St. Moore's Harbour Master, it's a great, great job to have, Chris Turner, received a report from a local fisherman that the swan had been discovered dead in the sea nearby. Now, here's a good idea for a show, Rob, a, 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 sh- a detective show all about the goings-on around Cornwall. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you know what, Alex? I can make so many disparaging comments. I've got a great idea for the title. Cornish Patsy. <laughs> right. Okay. It's all about a man who was set up framed for a crime. Put it on ITV. Sunday nights, eight o'clock. Cornish Patsy. Come on. Brilliant, Alex. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, so anyway, this harbour master got a report from the local fisherman that a swan had been discovered dead in the sea nearby. The fisherman who reported it brought the swan to the harbour office and revealed that its head had been, in quotes, cut clean off. The swan was well known to Mr Turner and many other locals who have been left horrified by the incident. When it says the swan was well known to Mr Turner and many other locals, does it mean known, in quotes, in the biblical sense? <laughs> no, Alex, it doesn't mean that at all. Um, you know, I, I, I assume it was a beloved animal, not in, you know, in a, in a carnal way. Um, 
you know, the, the children would play with it, take it to the beach, um, buy an ice cream, that kind of thing. And, and then, then he just, you know, he kicks open the door to the harbour office and slams down the, the lifeless corpse onto the desk. <laughs> His head's been cut you off. Know, son's head. <laughs> Isn't the fisherman suspect number one here, or prime suspect? He's oh, the guy who rang don't. in about it and he brought it in. And that, that, that smells fishy to me. I, pump, I would ask what he did with the body afterwards, because if he, if he reported the crime and then just took it home, <laughs> especially if it was on a Sunday, Alex. Mr. Turner told Cornwall Live that St. Moore's, which sits on the tip of Roseland Peninsula near Truro and Falmouth, had informally adopted the swan when it began visiting at the end of 2021. The exact circumstances behind the death of the swan, which despite its popularity hasn't been named by locals, remains unknown. What do you make of that, Rob? Sorry. So this, this quote, the, the swan, despite its popularity, was never named by locals. So did they just call it swan? Oi, swan. <laughs> Unless they, they were so unimaginative, they couldn't even think of a name for it. <laughs> um, sorry, it's only been there since last year, did you say? It arrived last year, so it's been... Yeah, end, end of 2021. So this beloved swan has been there all of, what, four months? <laughs> Brilliant. Well, it's already been <laughs> fucking killed. The <laughs> harbour master said, we think the swan was killed on the evening of April 20th, and it was found on the morning of April 21st. It was found decapitated around 8am by a local shell fisherman. Um, I assume that's a fisherman who fishes for shells. Well, I don't know why you would do that. Uh, and not a fisherman who works for the oil conglomerate shell, I assume. Yeah, yeah, I, I would think so, yeah. He reported it to us and brought it in. I've seen the carcass myself. The RSPCA was contacted and they collected the carcass. So that's what they're good for, the RSPCA. They will come down, Rob, and collect your, your dead, your swan carcass. And then they'll, they'll pick through it. You know, they'll get their detectives on the case. Well, it's good to know that they're finding some use. So, I mean, but I'm assuming only if they, I, I would, I would, well, I would think that they would only collect a, 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 some, a, some animal carcass if they think a crime been committed. So, you know, because I'm thinking of the, your story the other week where um, a woman's dog had died and the insurance company failed <laughs> to pay out for, for funeral costs. So I'm assuming you can't just call the RSP and say, look, my cat's just died. Can you come and collect it? I can't be bothered to do anything with it. <laughs> That's a good question, actually, Rob. Yeah, it's a very good question. Um, for Mr. Turner added, there is currently a reward of £250 for any information which could lead to a prosecution. Asked, so here we are then, Rob. They asked Mr. Turner, the journo, what's the significance of the swan? And he said, it was the local St. Moore's swan. It had been here since before winter and into spring kept coming here. So I, I need to repeat this, Rob. It's only been hanging around for four to six months and he's already calling it the local St. Moore's swan. I think you have to be, you have to be, and that's not part of the furniture yet. I'm sorry, it isn't. He's lost my sympathy. No, I, I agree. I mean, is it, Alex, is it possible this is the first time the locals have ever seen a swan? <laughs> They've never left St. Moore's, you know, and, and suddenly this beautiful winged creature lands. They, they think it's a dragon initially. <laughs> then someone opens it, uh, and know. then and then they're so frightened. But then they're so frightened by it that they make love to it and then kill it and decapitate it. <laughs> <laughs> Into so the Cornish weird ritual that, to the Cornish that everyone, gods. Everyone is in in cahoots with, and they just they and they never say a word about it. And suddenly the the, the, the swan just turns up dead. Think of the Wicker Man, right? It's that kind of area. Yeah. Right. Anyway, he said it was very friendly. The swan would approach anyone without malice. Spent time on the slipway in St. Moore's, known by everyone. Everyone's been quite upset. To my knowledge, there were no marks on the body to suggest it had been attacked by an animal. A clean carcass, apart from the head missing. Horrific and very upsetting. He's very matter-of-fact, isn't he, Rob? It would be. I mean, honestly, it's spoken like a true killer. An employee... Rob takes that back. This is a comedy podcast. An employee... So we just say shit. An employee at St. Moore's Bakery added, All I've heard is it apparently happened Wednesday night. One of the local fishermen found it floating on Thursday morning. Its head wasn't there. Cut right off. Is that Cornish or not? Not really. It's more Somerset, wasn't it? The, the, the accent I don't think was too far off. Um, right, okay. I mean, I'm not too au fait with the Cornish accent, but uh, I don't think it's quite as West Country. It's got a bit of a twang to it. Yeah. At St. Moore's Cafe, which overlooks the seaside, um, they posted on social media that it was heartbroken by the news of the swan's death. They wrote, in quotes, Rob, what is wrong with these people? This swan was a little part of the lovely community in St. Moore's, living side by side with the locals. It only been there since the end of 2021. How attached did these idiots get in four months to this swan? <laughs> it 
wasn't going to stay. I like to think that the, the cafe is, is, is doing some sort of m- memorial meal. Um, I, I don't know. Yeah. Cutting chicken into the shape of swans or something. Okay, here's what's interesting, Rob. A spokesperson for the Devon and Cornwall Police say they have no log of a police report having been made at all. Mm. That's convenient. I'll be honest. And Cornwall Live have reached out to the RSPCA for further information. Rob, did they make this up? Is there no dead swan? <laughs> are they just like? Are they all? Oh, maybe that. Maybe they're. Maybe all that. Maybe that bakery is lacing the food with cannabis, Rob. <laughs> maybe, but also, Alex, let's not forget that obviously that. Uh, Cornwall was one of the places that voted for Brexit, even though that they received quite a substantial grant from the EU. So maybe they are doing things to, to just generate tourism and and have very little immigration and yeah. have very little immigration as well. And um, look, right, Rob, let's go through some comments. It's been a while. Northy says, "Not good, but the hypocrisy is interesting. Every day, thousands of animals get slaughtered in horrible circumstances on farms and in slaughterhouses, and the majority of people dismiss it, but only because swans mean something different to us. There is public outrage. Interesting." Uh, Matty G77 says no not the same Northy says how so SAN says cognitive dissonance they're pretty happy paying for animals to be needlessly exploited and slaughtered because they don't have to see it deal with it and therefore don't have to think about it anyway that's the end of that part Karim says all swans in the UK are property of the Queen so this is an act of high treason um, isn't, that, isn't that a myth I think or something we, we covered this didn't we uh, it is a yeah. That's that's complete bullshit. It's only a certain breed of swan is a uh, property of the queen. Not all swans are. Yeah, that's a common misconception. Yes. Um, good news, please, Rob. Obviously, an advocate uh, and an adherent of the graduation theory because they say serial killer in the making. So sad and worrying. So they're speculating <laughs> that you know. Um, Bertie Twelve says evil sign of the times. I've been on about and it will get worse unless. The people take back control. I thought we'd taken back control with Brexit, Rob. Yeah, what, what are we taking back control of now? What, are swans? Well, well M- MP103 says control of what? Yes, <laughs> indeed. Um, uh, Anderson Erickson says, my sincerest condolences to the family, RIP. I, I feel like this... Sar- <laughs> I feel no, like that's this... That's a sarcastic comment. <laughs> that's a sarcastic comment. Uh, Roy Sampson says, this kind of stuff seems to happen every time kids are on holiday. And uh, another commenter says Easter holiday and clueless children is never a good combination. Are they suggesting that a child inadvertently decapitated a swan? I think that they were they were alluding to the fact that maybe the, uh, there was some London hoodlums uh, that come down to Cornwall holiday with their knives and uh, taken our local swan. Right. And I'll just finish with this comment. Um, Tony Gator says there are some very cruel and violent people out there. Needless and might. This is an episode title if ever I've heard one. I was about to say, he was definitely building to that. And here it is, right here. Needless and mindless killing of a beautiful and graceful bird for the personal pleasure of a sick mind. That's going to be my album title. <laughs> Needless and mindless killing of a beautiful and graceful bird for the personal pleasure of sick mind. Actually, that could be an album by Nick Cave. Really could. <laughs> Okay, Rob, story. You got a story for us there? Yep. Yeah, uh, first story is from uh, the Traitorous Guardian. Um, it is from the 22nd of April by uh, Toby Thomas. Uh, and the headline is uh, One Eyed Joe, cat that went missing for five years, found on Scottish oil rig. Uh, <laughs> sorry. A Scottish oil rig would be out at sea, no? Yes, yes, yes. How the fuck? Okay, okay. <laughs> I'll, 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 hear about, I'll hear all about it uh, A cat that was missing for five years has been re- reunited with its owner after being found on an offshore oil rig um, <laughs> <laughs> Workers at the oil rig can ta- uh, can ta- sorry, workers at the oil rig contacted the Scottish SPCA on Thursday after they found the animal in a shipping container originally from Peterhead Now hang on a minute Rob Let's just speculate here Right Working on an oil rig Rob is a lonely life <laughs> right, you're cut out in the middle of the ocean. Yes, uh, and and I think most people who work on oil rigs are men. Would be my assumption. I think that's a fair assumption. Everybody sitting around the camp, or you know, I'm not sure you'd like a campfire on an oil rig. Probably <laughs> not a very good idea. Everybody, <laughs> no, I don't think any sort of fire on an oil rig is a wise decision. So you're sitting, <laughs> not an open one anyway. So you're just sitting around in the digs at night, and people start talking about how they're feeling a bit pent up, and somebody goes, look. I've got this mate who's got this cat. Should we get it shipped over on a crate? <laughs> Is that what's happened here, Rob? Is it? Alex, look, 
it doesn't. There doesn't need to be a seedy angle to this. Maybe they just want some f- some uh, feline companionship, not in a sexual way. Maybe they just want you know, just a pet around the place. Maybe it's something that they they just want you know to 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 take care of. Something that reminds them of home. It doesn't need to be you know made into something that uh, you know some some sexual object. Alex, there's a children's book in this, Rob, all about a pet cat who lives on an oil rig. It's quite quaint. I like it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so on Friday, staff from the Scottish Animal Welfare Charity contacted, sorry, collected the microchip cat after they were, they were flown back to the mainland by, ho- by helicopter. Um, the, kit, the, the cat is believed to have been living as a stray around Peterhead Prison in Aberdeenshire. Right, so it is an interesting cat. So the first children's book could be about the cat, the pussy of Peterfield, Peterfield, was it? A Peterhead. The pussy of Peterhead Prison is the first book. And then the second book. I mean, a lovely a, alliteration as well. Yeah, exactly. And then the the, the I, d- I haven't thought about the title for the the second one, but it will all about be about this cat going to an oil rig. Sorry, how did it get from Peterhead Prison to an oil rig? Oh <laughs> uh, well, because it, it was in the shipping container. It, it, it was obviously it was obviously a stray. So, uh, went down to the docks. Okay, looking for business, uh, and stumbled into a shipping container. <laughs> this is like this is uh, very, it's very quaint. It is like the ears are like the old stories I was read to as a child, Rob. Yeah. Uh, so commenting on the rescue, uh, SPCA Animal Rescue Officer Amy Findlay uh, said she had no idea how the cat ended up in the container, but had been nicknamed One-Eyed Joe by the prison officers who'd been feeding her for five years. Do you know uh, why it was called she One-Eyed added, Joe, after Rob? Checking- we, uh, when I was young, <laughs> you know, I had on. a friend, I had a friend, as you know, that, that, that guy I told you about, Ross, where they used to have a bad track record with animals. Yeah. So they did have a little dog and it only had one eye. And we all used to speculate they only had one eye because his dad would... Uh, this is disgusting. I mean, the things kids would say. We used to say that it's because his dad used to use the, the dog's empty eye socket for pleasure. Right. <laughs> I, feel really aw- I feel really awful now that we would say this. You know, he took it in. Is he he's... okay to you saying that on the podcast? <laughs> but his dad didn't do that, obviously. <laughs> no, no, but even, even just suggesting that, Alex. <laughs> I, you know, I'm leaving it in. If he asks me to edit it out, I'll edit it out. Ross, if you're listening, I can. We can always take down the episode after it goes out, and we can edit that part out. Or you can sue me. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. So uh, she added, after checking his microchip, it turns out his real name is Dexter. Um, uh, we're so glad that he was looked after uh, for this time. I'm pretty sure the dog's name was Pebbles, by the Look, way. But I could be wrong. Good, good to know. Uh, but we're even more delighted to be able to, to reunite him with his original owner, thanks to a microchip being up to date. Uh, according to local residents, the cat's chosen to sleep at the prison, where staff fuss over him, and he was loved so much. So that, that a, a nice, a nice animal story there, Alex. Um, so let's move on. Now uh, we've uh, we, we've we've now uh, over the Easter break, but I thought we'd we'd have an Easter story because we need you know it's always nice to have something relating to uh, to the time. Rob, Rob, before you continue, you talk about Easter. I obviously could not read this story on the podcast, so I won't. But I just want to read you the headline. Um, I saw this in a few places. I obviously can't read it because it goes against our guidelines that you and me have implemented. I'm just going to read you the headline. Right. Seminary student dies in Jesus' crucifixion reenactment. <laughs> One of the best headlines we've ever oh, had. God. The mind boggles. Yeah. I don't want to say anything. My God. Uh, yeah, okay. That, that is a great <laughs> headline, whichever way you look at it. That's a headline where you want to know more. Yeah. Although, it, it, as tragic as it undoubtedly would be, yeah, you need to know exactly what happens there. Can I just say, Jesus Crucifixion Reenactment is a great name for a heavy metal band. <laughs> it really is. Especially if they're a Christian me- heavy metal band. <laughs> uh, sorry, Rob. Uh, I, you okay. digress, yeah. S- so this is from the Manchester Evening News uh, from the 18th of April. Uh, it's by uh, Rachel Pugh, who is the fashion, beauty, money and shopping editor. Well, she's been given a uh, lot of tasks uh, then, and- hasn't she? <laughs> That's a fair brief, that is. Uh, and, and Alex Grove, who is just the, who is just the content editor. Um, so Can I just say that just shows the, the disparity, doesn't it, in gender in the workplace. She's being asked to do all this probably for less money than him, who only has to manage the content, Rob. It's not fair. Absolutely. No, I completely agree, Lex. Anyway, look, the headline is Asda in hot water with furious mum of seven uh, after £20 Easter eggs almost ruined kids' Easter. £20 Easter eggs? What, one Easter egg costs £20? No, no, no. There, there, there's a few of them. Basically, she bought... Well, look, we'll get into it. 
So a mum of seven is hit out at Asda after she ordered £20 worth of Easter eggs, which nearly ruined Easter for her kids. The mum said she ordered £20 worth of Easter eggs to give to her children and grandchildren, but didn't receive a single one. Um, the mum took to Twitter to slam the supermarket um, where she received a response. Here's what happened. Uh, Tracy Tracy's Smith, 43, from Queensbury near Halifax, paid £20, paid for £20 worth of Easter eggs on, on Thursday, April 14th, as part of her, her online shop with Asda. Um, she planned to give them to her seven children and her grandchildren on Easter, uh, but upon delivery, she was told that none of the, none of the eggs were, were in stock. Um, the mother of seven told it that Leeds Live, I ordered three large eggs and lots of small ones to do an egg hunt on Sunday morning. I ordered them along with my usual grocery shop and placed them in the order on April, April 14th. Hang on a minute. So. It's a bit late yeah. in the day, isn't it? <laughs> that, sorry, it wasn't a, so April the 15th was Good Friday. Is there something wrong with this woman? <laughs> yes, it was. That's correct. Is there yes. something wrong with this yes. woman? She ordered, she ordered Easter eggs, Alex, three days before Easter and then slams Asda because they haven't been delivered because they're not in stock. And if my dates are right, Rob, your daughter's birthday was in between the, the crucifixion, the death and resurrection of Christ. Uh, 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 correct, Alex, yes. That's quite, you know. But it won't, I didn't, I, can I just say she wasn't crucified, by the way, just let me make that absolutely clear. But it won't be like that every year because Easter moves around, doesn't it? It's a tricky bout. Yeah, it was very, it was very, very fortuitous uh, this year, um, and uh, she, she, she got very uh, a lot of very sort of juicy themed presents as well. Did she? It's very strange. Right, okay. Yeah. No, 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 not at all. No. Um, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take that to be honest. At this point in time, gold, you know, it's a valuable asset. Anyway, look. Um, Tracy said she's now twenty pounds down until as the refunds her, and the lack of as meant she she had to go on a mad rush to find replacements on on uh, Friday evening with the Yorkshire mum eventually buying them from Tesco's. Um, after sorry, 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 Rob. Sorry, her complaint is that she didn't get the Easter eggs. They didn't deliver them. But she... Yes. How are they going to deliver... What did they promise? How are they going to deliver them? Good Friday was a bank holiday, so when was she expecting to get them? Well, but she had a... She must have had a shop. I think what happened was she, she ordered them, and they must have been showing us in stock on the website, but when they, when they actually made the... Uh, they delivered the order... They weren't in stock. But if you wanted them that badly, you would have bought them weeks ago. That's like on Christmas Eve trying to buy somebody a Christmas present. All right. But yeah, still. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, and it, it, you would think that, you, you know, if she had, I mean, she, she obviously does have seven children and also grandchildren. You think you probably, I don't know, prepare slightly further in advance. Yeah. Um. Uh, after noting none of the eggs were available, despite paying for them, uh, Tracy tweeted the as the service team and said, "When you order all the Easter eggs for your kids to be delivered, and they're all gone unavailable, great, thanks, Asda." Uh, the team have responded by apologising. Tracy I'm said, um, "They got on fuck said, off. as well as a refund." We don't want your custom. <laughs> what do you fucking think? Who orders it? <laughs> What's the matter with you? Um, the team responded by apologising. Tracy said that as well as a refund, Asda has offered her a fifteen pound voucher to spend in stores. A goodwill gesture. I think they have every right to around to her and go and tell us go fuck herself personally. So do I. Um, there's there's a few comments. Um, uh, John Keem says, uh, ordering three days before Easter and expect them to have stock on eggs? Not likely. I was smart enough to buy mine as soon as they hit the shelves. Oh, okay. All right, mate. Well, you're coming across as a bit of a, a dick. But yeah, <laughs> were you now? Yeah. Or you could do what my grandmother used to do and literally buy them a year in advance. You wait, you, you buy the old stock, you know, so, 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 <laughs> yeah, so buy, that, buy them year before and then give them to the next year. Yeah, so right now there'll be still some Easter eggs sitting on the shelves at cut price. You buy them now and then you just keep holding them. That's, that is what she used to do. Yeah. Uh, Ronnie Clef said, I was disappointed and frustrated, quite in the article, when they were unavailable, but not necessarily surprised that Asda are quite poor having stock. Uh, he responds by saying, then use one of the, ma- <laughs> the many other shops or online services or heaven forbid, get off your, get off your bottom and go to the shops yourself. Um... Uh, he he also then adds up with another uh, follows up with another comment saying uh, if being tem- if being temporarily twenty pounds down is an issue for this woman then maybe she shouldn't have popped out seven kids or should have got got twenty quids or spent twenty quids on heavily processed sugary fatty foods. I mean, really laying into her, Alex. Let's not be judgmental. That was judgmental comment of the week. Uh, yeah, I mean they're they're all on a similar theme here. Let's be honest. <laughs> Okay, Rob, it's time for our listener story of the week. 
Who's it from? So uh, he really has been busy. So this is this is from Kyber this week. Thank you, Kyber. Um, now the story is from the Derbyshire Live website. Uh, it is by Matthew Lodge, uh, who is the senior reporter, which is good to know. Um, now it. It, it, it's not the most current. It's uh, the 1st of October 2020, but it is a good story. Now, I mentioned before that I think I have an episode title in here. Um, <laughs> Let's see if I can spot it. So the, the headline is, uh, Peak District Vandals attacks uh, include Bizarre Shrine to David Jason. Is Bizarre Shrine to David Jason the episode title? I think Vandal Attacks on, on a Bizarre Shrine to David Jason is, is the episode title, personally. I think that and the one I said earlier are very neck and neck. I'm going to have to leave you to decide. Maybe you draw it out of a hat, but that's very good. That's very good. Okay. Sorry, but he, a shrine to... David Jason's not dead, unless I've missed something. <laughs> no, he's not dead. No, you're right, Alex. He's very much no. alive. Um, yeah. If anybody wants to know, David... A lot of people don't know this, so we should just mention it. You will all know David Jason from... Shows like Touch of Frost and, of course, Only Fools and Horses. But he's a great voiceover artist. He did... Dan- he was Danger Mouse, for the love of God. He was Count Duckula. He was. He did loads of voices. Yeah. Um, and he's still alive. He, he's, a, he's, a, he's a national treasure, Alex. I think it's, it's fair to say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so police are searching for the people responsible for, gra- uh, for graffiti, which was sprayed on a, a Derbyshire beauty spot. Um, officers for the Derbyshire Rural Crime Team, which, by the way, I want to be a part so of. So do I. So do I. Should, um, we, should, we, should we just do it, Rob? Ups- let's leave yeah, our lives we, and commitments. Just send some- let's leave our lives and commitments behind. That does involve leaving your baby daughter and your wife. But we'll go to Derbyshire and we will join the rural crime, whatever they're called, and bring our woodland murder detective skills to, to good use. <laughs> I just like the idea of solving rural crime. I don't know why that is. That Why does that sound so appealing? It, it would be terrible, Rob. It would be so fucking boring. It would be somebody stole the TV aerial off the top of my cottage. <laughs> do you know what, Alex, at the moment, I'll take that. I'd do it. I'd do it. But also, I'd like to do it in a overly heavy-handed way. <laughs> <laughs> well, like kicking someone's door down at 3am because they, they, they store next door's bin. Yeah, yes, like that. <laughs> Dragging them out of bed. Yeah. <laughs> Just flashing lights in their eyes. Um, so officers from the Derbyshire Rural Crime Team are looking for the people behind the vandalism of Higgertor uh, near, I think that's Hathersage. Hathersage? Um, the culprits at Higgertor left a series of graffiti tags on the rocks at the site. Um, regularly, uh, regularly features in photos of the Peak District and site of sp- uh, special scientific interest. Um, Sorry, what's David Jason got to do with any of this, Rob? We're coming on to that. So officers are also looking into a, uh, to a separate incident of vandalism, which saw a bizarre shrine to David Jason set up in the ruins of the Sutton Scardale Hall near Chesterfield. So... <laughs> a, I'm sorry, a bizarre shrine to David Jason, I think, is the, is the episode title. Just those words. I think that's, that's good. So, Alex, there's a photograph of this shrine in the what was it? So, in 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 the ruins of Sutton Scarsdale Hall. <laughs> Should I have a look at it? <laughs> yeah, I, I would. David, but, hang on, where is it? Yeah, uh, no, I can. I won't describe it. So maybe if you just um, maybe it's a Pete Dale uh, vandal attacks, but a Pete District vandal attacks. Hopefully that will come up. I mean, you put David Jason, obviously. Right, hang on. I'm looking at the. Oh yes, <laughs> yes. Right, because there's another story on BBC. Just wait a second. Confusion over David Jason's shrine left in breaking. A David Jason superfan broke into a historic mansion and left very unusual items relating to the Only Fools and Horses actor. And by the way, I'm just looking at some roses, which like like you traditionally lay like on a grave, and and a picture of David Jason's uh, autobiography, autobiography, which is called Only Fools and Storms. Uh, I'm not sure I can read that. No. St- only fools and stories. Hang on. Only- oh, that's quite nice. Yeah. Nah, that's a bit of shit. Yeah, anyway, that is bizarre. <laughs> Very bizarre. So in the incident, the people responsible pulled down a fence to gain access to the site of the Grade 1 listed building, left behind flowers and a copy of, of the Only Fools and Horses actor's autobiography. <laughs> right. Um, so in a post on the Facebook page on Tuesday 29th, uh, the Derbyshire Rural Crime Team poked fun at Discovery. Um, of the shrine, it wrote, um, being rural, rural crime officers, we find ourselves dealing with strange incidents yesterday with, with no uh, explanation. As autumn approaches, we see a touch of frost returning to the hills of Derbyshire. We are planning for the season ahead. 
Our office will be open all hours. The coming months will no doubt see us encountering a few falls and horses on our travels. So for any of our international listeners who might not be aware of you, David Jason is in that tweet or whatever it was, there were lots of references to shows. David Jason has been in, shoehorned in there. Uh, open all hours, a touch of frost, only falls on horses were the ones I noticed. It, it continues, by the way. Uh, he was also in Darling Buds um, of May, of course, wasn't he? Perfect. He, well, he was indeed, yeah. Yeah, that, that's, that's not in their quote, unfortunately. Um, and they, the, the next one features Trigger and Reliant, which I don't know what that is. I don't seem to remember that programme at all. No, Reliant, um, did you say? Yeah, Reliant. Well, because they drove it in Old Newfoundland Falls and Horses, they drove a Robin Reliant. Three-wheeler. Oh, sorry. Yeah, okay. I thought it was, yeah, I hadn't made that connection. Um, yeah, and that, that's pretty much the article, Alex. Uh, they're obviously the, the searching for suspects um, and, uh, you know, trying to work out who's leaving a bizarre, a bizarre shrine to, to David Jason. Is the obvious answer not that the culprit is David Jason? David Jason, yeah, yeah. There, there is that possibility. You know, I mean, he hasn't done an awful lot recently, so, you know, maybe he's just trying to raise his profile again. Cry for help. Attention, that kind of thing. Okay, that brings uh, episode 361 now to a close as we look forward with a mixture of eager anticipation and trepidation to our next episode, which will be episode 362. Um, we're on uh, our website, lapodcast.net. We're on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash lapodcast. We're on Twitter, at lapodcast. All the episodes can be found on Spotify if you're a Spotify user and you like listening to them that way. Wherever you're listening to us, whether it's Apple Podcasts or any other podcasts that please do hit subscribe and please do leave us a review that really helps us every time we get a new review um, an angel sings that's what I've heard um, uh, what else was I going to say oh yes and of course if you want more of this more local anaesthetic content you just go over to patreon.com forward slash LA Podcast Extra there is a link on our website lapodcast.net there are links on Facebook aren't there there are links everywhere to the Patreon Rob yeah. even, probably even in your description of the podcast on whatever you're listening to and you can go there and you can sign up it's £2 a month and you'll get um, a couple of episodes of LA Podcast and Extra Jab every month delivered to your inbox and all of the back catalogue of LA Podcast Extra Jab episodes are already there I think they're about 21, 22 old there now I can't remember Thank you for listening, everybody. We're going to be back in two weeks' time with the regular free LA. But of course, as I said, if you want more local anesthetic content, head over to Patreon now and we will see you there for episode 22. God bless. And keep it local. local anesthetic podcast is now on patreon so sign up now to receive exclusive la podcast and extra jab bonus episodes to your inbox every month these can't be found anywhere else and if you want to hear them go to patreon.com forward slash la podcast extra more stories about stupid people doing stupid things teacher rushed to hospital after shoving usb cable in his penis no he no fuck off he didn't <laughs> He inserted the cable to measure the length of his penis out of sexual curiosity. What pleasure could you possibly derive from this? I mean, apart from trying it this evening. More stupid people doing more stupid things. Parents ordered to pay 43-year-old son after getting rid of his pornography collection. I just feel bad for the parents because it seems like the one thing their son has managed to get right is the fact that he has a vintage pornography collection. That's the only thing going on in his life. Well, inside the boxes were films such as Lesbians in Tight Shorts, University Coed 25, and 1001 Erotic Nights. <laughs> what can I, I... I see, what I'd like to know is, where, what was it? It was a University Coed 25. Did he have the, the whole University Coed? Serious. And of course, the strangest news stories you've ever heard. Man left baffled after finding whole potato in his bag of kettle chips. What? Dr. Boyce, 38, was watching the deers rut in Leicestershire when he felt peckish and opened a bag of crisps. What a strange... Was he having, was he having a wank? Was he? What a strange... <laughs>
<laughs> so what a strange thing to include in the story. So the journalists went over there. They're like, tell us what happened. He goes, well, I was watching some deers have sex out of my window. 